What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. Welcome back. It's Wednesday, and we are back with a brand new episode of TGIF. Like always, we're here to spill the tea and break down some of the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So get you something to drink and get ready to share some of this hot tea. What's up, fellas? What's up, Al? What's up, Q? Hey. What's up? How y'all doing today? Very good. Uh, I'm stressed out, honey. Why? Some of you, so y'all know I live on a small little island on Miami Beach. Somebody, that was a car accident, so I couldn't get home. We had to do the show. I still got on gym clothes. I had to get to a friend's house in the middle of traffic. I got my groceries in my trunk melting all over my nice car as we speak. I'm just stressed out. You know I'm stressed out when I'm in here drinking beer. Okay, I'm in here oh. drinking beer. Okay, well, hopefully Al's not having as, as hard of a time. Are you having a stressful day, Al? Are you good? No, I'm good. You know, I'm coming off of the high of doing the Grammys, walking, doing the carpet and interviewing all those amazing people. How exciting to see such a black and brown Grammys because they celebrated hip hop. I'm still just emotionally on that high. It was an incredible experience. I promise you. Super, super, super fun. And I look like that's a dope year. 73. That's the year of hip hop. That's the same yeah. year I was born. So we 50. All right, y'all. <laughs> Let's get into the show. We have a lot to cover tonight. Let's get into it. Okay. Uh, over the weekend, uh, BBC News issued an apology after confusing Beyonce with Viola Davis during their Grammy Awards recap. Now, while discussing Beyonce's record-breaking status at uh, the Grammys, the news platform displayed photos of Viola Davis at the Golden Globes. The BBC press team wrote the following statement. We apologize for the mistake last night when our news channels briefly showed a photograph of Viola Davis from January's Golden Globes, alongside a headline about Beyonce at yesterday's Grammys. Now, this fell below the BBC's usual standards. Q, I see you shaking your head, so let's go to you first. What do you think about this mix-up? Listen, listen, white America and white UK, we just get to a point where y'all need to appoint Black people for Black stories, all right? Like, we need to segregate the stories and segregate the office, and yes, I am pushing for us to regress as a global society and go back to segregation because white people, y'all just can't get it right, okay? I don't know what type of intern, I don't know who over the age of 70 can't make out Viola Davis from Beyonce. Like, it, 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 it's just giving no man all right al what do you think about this you think it was I just mean, to try to get publicity or what do you think you know i think the bbc should be ashamed of themselves they are a powerhouse media conglomerate they're over a hundred years old that's just like the nbc here in the united states is uh is close to a hundred years old making that mistake that's just like the u.s outlet um comparing or making this mistake of the newly deceased queen of england and the princess of wales that's how i view it like how are you going to make that type of mistake beyonce's been in the game for 20 years everyone knows her internationally viola davis has been in the game almost 20 years they are household names how do you confuse them only because you want to thank you bbc for using us americans to get you some publicity it's just not right though you know people in the chat are saying oh they think we all look alike no they know we don't all look alike okay there's mm. no like like look at the three of us look at Vi viola davis and beyonce look at the people they constantly do this to it's a lack of respect mm -hmm. and and sometimes i feel like they're just like having fun in the newsroom amongst mm -hmm. themselves like <laughs> let's see what they say about this one because mm -hmm. there's no way in hell you don't know, know the difference between beyonce and viola, and viola davis, davis. They shit all the time come on i can even understand it if they mistake I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say they put up Aaliyah's picture instead of Beyonce, or they made a mistake and put up Kelly instead of Beyonce. But Viola Davis and Beyonce, there is a stark difference between both of them. Complexion, hair texture, age, facial features. I mean, and the list goes on. Cut it out. And from two different events. I used to work at Channel 7 in Boston. Shout out to WHDH in Boston. I used to work in logging in uh, footage, news footage. So we would have to log in like for the Chiron. The Chiron is the bottom of the screen where you see the person's name. We had to log in who was who. They are very well aware who Viola Davis was when they put that piece of video or picture on television. It is capped. They're lying that they didn't know. I mean, not at our, it's low key funny, not at our expense, but it's just messy as hell to be like, 
in the office and be like, Claudia, girl, want to play a prank on the news station? Like, we going to call Viola Davis, Beyonce, and see if we can get away with it. Like, it, it's kind of funny. Cammy in the chat, they said that's like mistaking Q for Al. It, it really is. It really is. <laughs> All right. And OK, they tried. All right, BBC. All right. Now, during a recent episode of the High Low with Emrata podcast, Amber Rose opened up about the conversation she had with her nine year old son after he revealed that his classmates tease him about her OnlyFans account. Amber said, when it comes to women, you have to let women do what they need to do to support their families. She continued, mommy has to make money. I want to go to you first, Al. Do you, do you agree with how she handled this situation? What do you think? Oh, 100%. My hat goes off to Amber. Uh, you know, I interviewed Amber Rose on the carpet at the Grammys. Everyone, please go to my Instagram page to check out that interview. I also hung out with her at Swiss Beats after party after the Grammys, and she had to leave early because she had to go take Sebastian to school. The interesting part here is that Amber is very communicative with her son, very forthright with her past and present, and I think she had a point. I think that eight-year-old boys are not on OnlyFans. I think it's it's their parents talking and she's well aware of it so for her to get in front of it and have an open conversation and communicate that to her son and then her son in return take up for his mother when the boy was trying to bring it up in the car with her it just gave me a warm feeling in my heart thumbs up and shout out to both amber and sebastian for being so adult about this and handling this the right hey, what way what do you think you know what? I'm less concerned about Amber Rose having to explain to her son about her past and more concerned about nine-year-olds even knowing what OnlyFans is and furthermore, even knowing what she was doing on OnlyFans to be able to use it as a read or to tease her son. Like, that's a little concerning to me because I just try to think back to when I was nine years old. I was still playing with Lisa Frank stickers, having Transformer lunchboxes, and playing with coloring books. Now, you newfangled parents out here, y'all can tell me what these kids doing. Maybe they're more advanced at nine years old, but I just wasn't there at nine. And if this is where we're at with nine-year-olds in 2023, then so be it. Again, I'm not a parent. I don't understand. But I'm glad that Amber, at least if, you know, like our generation, our parents swept things up under the rug when we came to them or they heard us say something. At least, you know, she was prepared to share with her son uh, what he needs. So he's not out here in the world looking stupid. I have mixed emotions, of course, about it, because on one hand, I don't justify everything being OK at the end of the day if there's a bag involved. And I think that OnlyFans is tough for kids of the people that have the OnlyFans. Like, we can sit here and say, well, she has to make a living. Amber Rose is smart. She's beautiful. She's... I've worked in a movie with her. She she has talent. She's st People are interested in her life. It's not the only thing she can do. She can do this and she has every right to choose. But I do wonder uh, deep down, he said a very mature, like it's, it's a mature conversation she's having with a little boy, but I hope deep down behind this conversation, he's not really affected and hurt because I could see how mean kids could be about this. You know, like they may have this conversation today, but you know how kids are when they find a little thing that they think is a weak spot or something that they can tag you on they keep revisiting that and I, I truly hope that he's okay but it does sound like she's preparing her man her son to be very respectful of a woman's choice and i commend her for that I, you know claudia to your point really quickly i love the women's choice argument and i love that the feminism piece that she's putting into him but mm -hmm. you're right about the whole i gotta earn a living and i can't tell that lady what to tell her kids mm -hmm. but to the point that you made there's a whole lot of other things you can do amber rose to earn a living now if you want to make the blogs about being forthright with your son about your work, then I'm gonna need you to be 100% honest because you don't have to do whole work to make a living, okay? I mean, Amazon, stay hiring. You see Tokyo Tony was driving the Amazon truck up and down the DC streets, messing up people, package deliveries, Uber Eats, drive, work, Instacart. There's a lot of other things you could do other than do sex work. So let's not make it seem like, oh, this is life or death, but you know, hats off. But I will say they, they are saying that there are people on OnlyFans that are making money without showing the genitals, right? It's probably not as much money, but was it Blueface? Or someone said they made money without showing their stuff? And I'm sure she probably isn't either because most right. of the celebrities like Evelyn Lozada were showing their feet. I mm -hmm. think Denise Richard was just doing like tastefully rated R type of panties and bra types of things. I'm pretty sure if Amber Rose was showing her cooch, 
it would have been all over Twitter and stuff right now. So I don't think she's doing soft porn. Um, but, you know, mama, you already got a bag and you getting child support. This, this, this ain't for you to make a living. This is you being greedy, trying to maintain a lifestyle. Unless you show them just sexy modeling pictures, then, then, then our points are null and void. Then do your thing, make your money, right? Yeah. All right, we got a lot more show. Let's get into this. Janelle Monae has been serving up looks lately. Well, not just lately. I think she, since she came off the gate, I think she's absolutely stunning. And social media immediately took notice of her style change and shared their thoughts on how the singer used to dress versus how she dresses now. I, for one, have always been a fan. One person wrote, Janelle Monae finally showing off how fine she is instead of dressing like the Monopoly man. Oh, no. Another person wrote, LMAO. It really goes to show how much y'all don't really be listening to these artists. There was a reason for her aesthetic, and she'd been looking amazing outside of that look for years now. Now, in multiple interviews, she stated it was to pay homage to her parents, who wore black and white uniforms for their jobs. But even during that time, she was playing with other color styles as well. Are y'all here for Janelle Monae's new look? And do you think social media is being too critical of her old look? Hugh, let's go to you first. What you think? No, you know what? D despite the reason for her having her old look, I don't think social media is being too critical. Like, I hate when people, you know, do something, some stark difference, some stark change. They make a left and then they expect everybody to be quiet. Like, we don't have two damn eyes and realize that something is different. One of these things is not like the other. I think Janelle Monet's first look was kind of what she was going for when she was doing her music thing. And the fact of the matter is, music ain't selling right now, especially the kind that she is singing. I don't know if y'all saw Glass Onion, but she acted her ass off in Glass mm -hmm. Onion. She mm -hmm. acted her ass off in Moonlight. I think Janelle Monet is realizing, okay, I'm gonna need to make this transition over to actress. And I'm sorry, wrong, right, or indifferent. When you are to be an actress in Hollywood, you have to give beautiful sex symbol, let them see the body, let them see versatility and not Halloween costume. You can't name one actress right now that is getting work, that has pigeonholed herself image-wise into that costumey type image that she had um, in the beginning. So no, I think she's doing the right thing to get some longevity off of the acting pivot that she's made. The first picture was giving a pop star or music artist, and the second picture was giving first leading, like first lady, leading yeah. lady. Al, what do you think about the looks? What do you think about the evolution? What do you think about the criticism? You know, I think that uh, Janelle Monae is one of the most beautiful women in the game today. Um, she looks great to me. You know, we talked about this <laughs> before, Claudia, where you were trying to put us together. Um, Janelle Monae has a beautiful body. Janelle Monet has a beautiful face. Janelle Monet has beautiful hair. Everything about her is beautiful. Her acting is accelerated. Her music career has always been interesting and solid to me. I, I'm just here for any and everything that this woman does. And I agree with Q. It's that transition that she's in and that she knows that there has to be a crossover appeal. And the crossover appeal is that body. And she's showing it. And I can't get enough of it. Isn't it just typical, though, with the audience? You damn if you do, you damn if you don't. You keep the same style. Why are you always dressed in black and white? You change it up. Why are you switching it up? Like, it's always going to be something someone's got to say. And the people that are saying it, what you wearing? What you looking like? All right, y'all, before we take a break, let's uh, take a look at this Black History Moment, sponsored by Nissan. Fox Soul celebrates Black history makers who have broken barriers and created change. Megan Pythas is Sesame Street's first Black female puppeteer, giving a fresh voice to a new generation of children. In 2020, Megan became the voice of Gabrielle, a six-year-old Black girl Muppet on Sesame Street. Megan is a self-taught musician and singing ventriloquist. Seven of the Lord. The two-time Emmy Award winner gained national recognition when she appeared on the hit television shows America's Got Talent and Showtime at the Apollo. With ventriloquism, it adds in the interaction between a human and a puppet. But long before Megan took center stage in the spotlight, John W. Cooper paved the way for black ventriloquists thrilling audiences with his puppets and his famous show, Fun in a Barbershop. Megan Pyfus's amazing voice and her magical gift to bring puppets to life will inspire generations of children to dream big and to explore their imagination and creativity. Megan. 
Honoring Black History Month on TGIF, presented by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop NissanUSA.com. You're muted. In the meantime, in between time, guys, <laughs> now, one thing that I want to say, oh, she, are, are, Connie, are you back with us? Can you hear me now? We can't oh, hear you. Uh, okay, I just want to say, uh, I want to say that I want to thank Nissan and, and through these moments with Black History Month and Nissan, getting to know people that we wouldn't normally talk about, they're off the beaten path and just showing different um, options out there of work. What were we going to say, Q? You know, one thing that made me smile about this clip with Megan is that I, I actually see several careers. Like one, I'm glad to know about the ventriloquism and Sesame Street. But aside from that, Megan is beautiful. She has the voice. And in order to be a ventriloquist, you have to know how to act. I think that at any moment, if she's ready to put that puppet down, she can also have a career singing and acting, Broadway, and all that other good stuff. So shouts out to you, young lady. Much success. All right, Al. Hey, you know, she got me when she got all four judges to give her a yes on America Got Talent in 2013. And then to watch her transition from there to the Jay Leno seat was just amazing because I had never heard of her before. And to watch her career just kind of explode to win those two Emmys. And then after that, be cast on Sesame Street as a voice of a young black girl. What a career. Congratulations, Megan, and keep up the good work. Hey, Q, in the chat, King Jones says, not Funky's white voice for Black History Month, how you just talk, he was real proper. <laughs> I was like, who is this new cast member? <laughs> okay, you tried it. Okay, you tried something, integration. That's there it is, is. there it uh, is. All right, quick commercial break. We'll be back with more show right after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Shout out to all the soulmates in the chat. I think we're at about mm, 3,800. We're come coming up on that 4,000 real quick. All right. Okay. All right. Listen, uh, social media went into an uproar after reports revealed that Leonardo DiCaprio, who is 48, is allegedly dating a 19 year old model, Eden Polani. Then one person tweeted, Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend is so young, her high school experience was interrupted by COVID-19. Uh, another person tweeted, at this point, can't even join in on the jokes anymore. If Leonardo DiCaprio is approaching 50 and dating a teenager, then he is acting uh, he's an acting sexual predator. Let's be clear. All right, what are your thoughts on this alleged relationship? Q, let's go to you first. Is this too much or is it over 18? Play ball. What you think? A absolutely not. You know, you know, that 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 first of all, that 18 crap is just an arbitrary number. That girl is a doggone child. Okay. And what it says to me, I'm sorry, what it says to me is that you were somewhere beating your meat, waiting for her to turn legal. I'm sorry, if you're a 50 year old man and you like 19, you're 50 years old and you like 16 and you like 15 too, as far as I'm concerned, because they are one in the doggone same. There is absolutely nothing a 50 year old, 50 year old man can sit across the dinner table and talk to a 19 year old about other than her allowance, her curfew, and where's she going to college at? Those are the only three things a 50-year-old can sit across the table and talk to a 19-year-old about. And for her parents, see, I'm not even mad with her. And I don't know what type of teenagers y'all are, but in my house, you didn't get grown until you graduated college, okay? At 19 years old, my parents were still telling me what the hell to do. And I'm sorry, your parents ain't shit if they laying around letting you lay it low and spread it wide with Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm sorry, everybody around this girl is failing her. And Leonardo DiCaprio, you nasty. And you are the living embodiment of everything they say is perverted and pedophilic-like in Hollywood. I feel you. My guy's daughter is just turned 20, and we have conversations a lot. And she's a very evolved and smart, you know, 20-year-old now. But she just has such a baby face and looks so young. And there's so many things that, like, there's so many years between us. And I'm just thinking, like, mentally, like, I get Leonardo looking at this girl in a lustful way, right, as her attractiveness. But mentally, I just wonder, do they not care? Al, what do you think? Do you think he doesn't care? Um, you know, I met Leonardo DiCaprio in 1999 when he was dating one of my clients, Giselle Bundchen. And, and, you know, I, I feel like, you know, he's always loved models. If you follow his Twitter feed, the guy is doesn't date anybody over the 20s. This is nothing to do. This is his preference. Do I think it's right? 100 percent. No. Um, but my question in this situation is we know where he's coming from. He's been consistent. What's up like what before? Q said, what's up with these families 
of these young girls who is allowing these young little girls to date him. In addition, what's up with these young women who are in their 20s who also are giving him permission to date them? I think this falls the, the falls on both sides. Like We know that he's an A-lister, but he has a preference. It seems like it could be inappropriate. But look, the young ladies are signing off on it. So I'm not, at, I'm not at, faulting a 20 year old. At 20, I'd have did the same thing. At 20, <laughs> we, I, we, we all would have. You would have gone for it, right? He, he, no, he's Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, right. at 20 years old, I would have hunched the teacher. Okay? I mean, how many 20 year olds hunched their college professor? It, it definitely is a mismatch in the power dynamic. In the in, mm. in the in the in the a level of influence, so no, I am not going to fault the twenty year old. The twenty year old is being taken advantage of. Hmm. Yeah. I, I so a twenty year old, in essence, cannot give consent. Like a twenty year old, twenty one year old, you would think shouldn't be able to give consent legally, to dating a fifty year old man as well. Le legally, they can. Legally, they can. You know what I'm saying? But from mm. a moral perspective, from a right and wrong perspective. Absolutely not. Not when you're 20 years old, you don't have enough life experience to realize that this rich man is preying on you. Got and it. All things constant, a 20 year old would not mess with a regular 50 year old that just drove trucks. You know what I'm saying? They're blinded by the, the glitz and the glam and the money. And it's not right. And he knows that. That's what makes it predatory. Go ahead, Claudia. Yeah, I'm not going to, uh, just like with the R. Kelly case, like I, I found, I, I know you met him before, Al, and you, you you like him and you work with him before. And I get that because like, you know, we want to be protective of the people that we rock with and we are fans of. I get that. But no matter who it was, like if R. Kelly, Leonardo DiCaprio, we cannot, any young girl is going to be, you I to me I think you're not mentally even there even uh, as much as they say women are developed faster I think 24 25 26 27 even an argument to be like late in your 20s before you really mentally got your capacity don't want some celebrity in there it's really I I I just don't like bending over backwards to take the responsibility away from the 50 year olds when mm. we all are supposed to be the ones that I don't know we should be the ones that say listen you may like me young girl but this ain't probably what we should be doing right now Cause I can, you know, I don't know. And I'm sorry, like I said earlier, what are they talking about? Like I don't think they're doing, doing a lot of all talking. All he doing is all he doing is hunching you. I, I I I don't I don't care how you slice it and dice it. There is no value outside of sex that a 20 year old can man or woman can provide a 50 year old who has lived. And mm. let me go ahead and make it both ways so we're not yeah. being, that's not bashing the men. If someone yeah. said Anna both Nicole Smith in the comments. And to these women that are, you know, that that go after the, the old dudes because they, they have a motive too. I still think it's creepy both ways. I think you should, I mean, date who you want, but uh, should it be arranged? Al, let me ask both of y'all. What's like the youngest y'all would go and the oldest y'all would go? Real quick. I'm, I'm 39 right now. The youngest I would go, and this is really a stretch, it's probably 32. I'm a firm believer of the high school rule. If we could have been in high school together at the same time, so that's give or take three to four years in either direction, then I'm good with it. Okay. Al, what about you? Like, do you have, what, do you have um, a... I don't know. Look, I, I, I know that I wouldn't date anyone in their 20s or early 30s, but I, I don't know that I would put so much limit on someone in my quest to find a love. I'm mature, so for me, you have to meet me at certain levels. So if I met a 38 or a 35 year old that was able to converse with me, able to relate to me, able to share their, you know, their selves and, and make me feel like it's somebody that I wanna get to know, I'm not gonna say you're 35, so I'm not gonna date you. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. I wouldn't say that with a 70 year old that I met and vibed with and had a great time with and explored, you know, I, a love spectrum with, I wouldn't say, hey, you're 70, you're 20 years older than me, you're praying on me, this is not a good match. I think I would probably take it case by case and once again, you know, use a little bit of preference as well as what's appropriate to. Growing up, not growing up, all through my 20s and 30s, and I always thought a younger man, you know, more physically fit, attractive, sexy, hard bodies, and now in my 40s, I you could not pay me to date those young boys. 
well, I won't say young boys, young men. I love my age range, my group where we can like vibe. You know, you be in the car, you listen to the same genre of music. There's a lot of, <laughs> you bond on those kind of things. Like re remembering certain, this, hey, you remember when Scott LaRock died, the, 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 the DJ back in 1985? Do you remember when Boogie Down Productions was out? What were you doing when you graduated high school? Do you remember mm -hmm. the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Like, it just helps build bonds, I think, outside of sexual and, and monetary bonds to me. This is my thing. And I love it. Like I'm with someone now that's the same exact age as me. And I love that we have so many things that we can both, we kind of, it feels like we grew up together. It feels like we live similar lives without being together when we, I don't know. That's just my opinion, but Hey, love who you love and get them bills paid by who you get your bills paid. I guess, no, I guess. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, uh, a Nigerian man uh, allegedly stole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what he was, Nigerian? Yes. Girl, it wasn't a legend. He did it. He, he didn't start, he, he scammed it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, <and laughs> all the Nigerian soulmates, y'all can get mad all the hell you want. Y'all know y'all men. There's no damn good. Y'all daddies, y'all uncles, y'all some damn scammers, okay? It is what it is. The whole damn continent of Nigeria, okay? The, Not the whole continent, the whole country. The whole country, whatever. <laughs> See, they don't scam me out my education. I got it wrong. <laughs> Q, you know they say, there's this saying that Nigeria is the Florida of Africa. Have you heard that? Here you go ahead and throw it. <laughs> you didn't have nothing to do with it. But they 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 wealthy though. I think it's the wealthiest. Um, hey, a Nigerian man allegedly stole ten thousand dollars from his girlfriend to gamble, story after my own heart, and won one hundred million dollars from his play. Now, at first, he didn't share any of the winnings with his girlfriend and only gave her back the exact amount that he initially stole. The girlfriend is now demanding that he give her forty million dollars from his winnings. But the man is refusing, and he says he plans to use that money to grow his business, and you ain't getting this money back. Now, after the girlfriend threatened to leave him, he ended up offering her $5 million. Do you think this is wrong? And let me go to you, Al. What, what would you have done in this situation? What do you think? Well, listen, I just want to be very clear. He stole 10000 Nigeria, what it, whatever it's called, which is only 21 U.S. dollars. OK, let's be very clear about the money that we're talking about. Now, he did win 100 million Nigerian dollars, which is about 200,000 U.S. dollars. Now, what he did give her finally was 5 million Nigerian dollars, which is 10,000 in U.S. dollars, which is a 330% increase on the initial investment. So I just want to make sure we put this all into perspective and not get lost in that word millions, because what she's actually asking for is a hundred thousand dollars in U.S. dollars when he took the 21 U.S. dollars. So I don't know. Well, with that math, I still think that she's right because $100,000 would be half of the 200000 American dollars he, he won off of her $21. Now, his ass didn't even have the $21 to even go there, okay? And because of her money, he was able to multiply that by what, 10,000%, whatever it, what, what it was, right? My math is off, but whatever, who cares? I know that half would be polite or even 25%. And that's the woman that, and it says that, that she's the love of his life, that he actually really does love this woman. I know that, yeah. What kind of husband would that man be if he doesn't even want to just like split the money that you helped him get? Q, what you think? I know you, you probably would have uh, took off and broke up with the girl, huh? Oh, course, I'm, 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 I'm sitting here rolling my eyes because, of course, y'all gold digging ass women would believe that y'all are entitled to 40 or 50%. No, honestly and truthfully, all he owe her is what he took, okay? Oh, hell no. All he owe her. Hell no. No, 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 no. You can't be, you, no, because all things constant, had he not won anything, all she would have wanted back was what he stole, okay? But he won. So you can't do no if then, but if you win, then I won't. They don't work like that. All I owe you is what I took. Now, to your point, you used the word polite. The polite thing to do would be to give her a little extra. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you love the person, you give them a little extra. But for her to want 40 or 50%, that's just ridiculous. He stole the money. He didn't ask and to borrow he it. He gave stole it back and said, I'm sorry. 
you as petty as your ass is. If someone stole money from you and won, I already know the kind of person you, you would have cussed this girl out, yes. went on the internet, made a video about her, yes. harassed her down until she gave you what you know you deserve because you feel you invested in her gambling, right? I, as a real talk, I would expect you to give me at least 20%. Now, anything over 20% is just, you know, extra. But yes, I would expect at least 20%. Now, to your point, if I give someone money for gambling and they win, it, 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 I'm not obligated to it, but if someone stole it from me, I, to me, I think that's where it's bothering me because they stole it. What do you think, Al? Because she stole, he stole the money. He didn't ask to borrow it. I don't know. I, I think I'm at the rock with Q on this one only because, like, what if he didn't win? Would she want the money back? If he came oh. back and said, here's the $21 I took, I didn't win, would it be a hoopla? I, 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 I think 20% is a good enough cut. That's his girlfriend, right? We don't know that he didn't have the money. We just know that he took it to buy that ticket at that time. I, I don't... And you know what? I stole, definitely don't feel like she deserves 50%. Definitely. Stole is a strong word, word for $21. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you no, know, we, he took it. <laughs> see, you know what? Y'all both kill me. Y'all both kill me. And that's why sometimes I want another woman on this show. Cause sometimes y'all be tag teaming me and y'all be texting each other. Let's get her. And whenever it's a I know y'all make Negroes. And whenever it's a man, y'all, especially Al, they could do no wrong. And when it's man and money, they could do no wrong. Y'all know damn well the both of you. If the both of you, if this happened to y'all, I know the kind of people y'all are, and y'all would not be singing the same tune. And I stand on that. We go to commercial. F y'all. We're going to commercial. <laughs> we'll be back. I'm mad. Welcome back to TGIF. Shout out to all the soulmates in the chat who just love when it gets feisty on the show and we come back all smiling. We all smiling, right? We right all L. smiling. We all L smiling. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all, listen. We got something for you. To our melanated soulmates, do you have dark spots? and an uneven skin tone? Well, let me tell you about Butter Skin. It's a line of skincare created to give melanin-rich skin a glowing and flawless complexion. Plus, it's a Black-owned brand. So some of your favorite celebrities like Cassie, Vanessa Simmons, Carrie Hilson, and Malik Hawk are credited, crediting Butter for their flawless skin. Now, I'm currently trying out their skincare kit, and the products are the bomb. I got them right here, y'all. We're going to get into it, okay? Um, now, since we're always hooking up our Foxhole family, we worked it out with Butter to give our viewers 25% off the Supreme Skincare Kit. Now, this kit comes from with a gentle cleanser, rose water toner, vitamin C serum, which really helps with dark spots, and your choice of moisturizer, which is so important to your skin. Now, all you have to do is go to butterskin.com and use code TGIF at checkout to get 25% off the Supreme Skincare Kit. That's butterskin.com and use code TGIF. Uh, this offer is valid until February 28th at 12 a.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific. And um, listen, I don't use a lot of products, but this uh, tea tree and aloe mask scrub, definitely gonna rock with this. Because that sounds really, really, really refreshing. Fellas, uh, you guys have your products, right? Al, you have your products? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have the cleanser, the toner, and the vitamin C serum. I can't wait. I can't wait to try it. I can't wait to try it. And, you know, I love it because, obviously, <laughs> it's an African-American male who's a part of the LGBTQ community that's just knocking it out the water. I have to try it. I have a commitment to be a supporter of such a strong product. All right. Well, that's Butter Skin. Let me go ahead and spell it out for y'all. It's B-U-T-T-A-H Skin. Dot com and use code T-G-I-F. Promotional consideration furnished by Butter Skin. All right, y'all. You know what, soulmates? We know how much you enjoy hearing about funky shenanigans in the streets because he's always out in them streets when he's not unlocking his better self. So we thought we'd give you some cue time with Funky Daniba. <laughs> Should we be scared this week? Y'all, no, I'm not scared to see, but you know, it's so funny you said I'm always in the streets. Well, since I'm always in the streets today my ass was in the doctor and al i got a question this is just a very short story for y'all al have you ever had a pap smear a what a pap smear no bro that's what women have actually it's not i had two smack pap smears today 
What? I, it, I, what? <laughs> what? What happens with the male? I, I, well, I'm going to tell you what happened. You know. Now, am I ready for this, Q? Well, you may or you may not be, but you know, being a first and foremost, I want to say, being a gay man, I think it's definitely important that you have a gay male doctor, you know, if you're sexually active. And my doctor today, when I got there, he said, he pulled up my chart and he said, you haven't had a pap smear since 2020. He said, you haven't had a pap smear since 2020. And he said, and you're getting one today. You're getting one in your throat. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. (laughs) You're getting one in your throat and you're getting one in your rectum. And, you know, listen, we're, we're talking about medical health here, and it is very important. And he said, listen, we have to check your throat. Listen, we all grow here, okay? Okay. And and I today got a pap smear in my throat, and I got one in my rectum. And listen, we've got a lot of uh, people who participate in anal play who are soulmates. And some of y'all may not know, you know what I'm saying? It is right. What what does it what does it so in, what does in it short, discover? In, in in your rectum, they take three cultures. Um right. and particularly it's to check for uh gonorrhea, syphilis, HPV, or chlamydia in your rectum, things that may be lying dormant in your throat and in your butt, if that's how you get down. And so I just figured I'd the story with y'all. Well, I didn't get the results yet, girl, but. Oh. <laughs> but, but Q, a few, a few shows back, you said that you, you're you're not a bottom, but you're a top. Right. So, so is it still necessary for, for those people that are, are tops? So that so that was the thing, right? Like I'm not exclusively talking. Like if I'm in okay. if I'm in a relationship or if, if me and you got a really serious situation going, I will let you play around back there. And since 2020, somebody has played around back there. So he was like, if you cannot answer that you exclusively have not done anything back there, then we need to do <laughs> another pap smear. Or whatever. Now, as far as the word concerned for my throat, I told him that I was a virtuous Christian woman, and oh, I didn't need I didn't need one in my throat or whatever. But today, I received two pap smears, and so for why or why y'all all y'all out there laughing and can <laughs> your ass develop HPV or cancer in your throat or in your ass? You're oh, gonna be God. thinking back <laughs> to this episode, so don't laugh all you want. Okay, but like RuPaul say, my name is Kane. I ain't no puta. I keep my panties clean. Okay, and I'm keeping them clean. Michael Douglas was uh, married to Captain Zeta Jones. He had throat cancer, and he said that was from eating a lot of the, the cooch. HPV in the throat. I am loving this Q time. <laughs> hey, don't, don't so, be out here caught slipping. Al, are you inspired? Would you? Uh, will you be doing this? Okay, I'm learning. Let me tell you. Okay, yeah. Q, uh, what is there a, a certain time, a age that we're supposed to do these pap smears? Are we supposed to do them annually? Are we supposed to do them every six months? Like well, what? I, I go to my doctor regularly, and he said that I had had my last anal pap smear in 2020. So he deemed that this was necessary now for me to get another one. But I think the rule of thumb generally is if you are sexually active and are using either of those orifices, that it is important that you do periodically get it done. And so is that, that's if you're using it with multiple partners, not if you have well, period, one, one partner. Person, one person could give you HPV. But while I was sitting in the doctor today, too, y'all, I saw something else. It said a sign that said most people who are sexually active get their first STD by the time they're 25. So to answer your question, Al, it's, it said over 50% of people who are sexually active will contract their first STD by the time they're 25. So if you over 25 and you hunching and you gay, okay, or if you're not gay, you need to get every hole swabbed. Well, That's Marcia, the whole of the story. Marsha T in the chat says, as a female doctor, I advise my young adults to get a smear of the mouth, throat, and scrape of the tongue of any culture bacteria and STDs. So, hey, this has been Q's Medical Minute. Didn't know we were doing that today. There it is. Yeah. Hey. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marsha. You know what? On that note, we're going to go to commercial. There's nothing else left to say. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TGIF, the chat. Q, you may have just saved some lies with your mouth and booty pap smear advice because there's <laughs> people saying they're going to schedule their appointments and they, they had no idea. So look at you looking doing the Lord's work here. There at it is. The Lord. Look at God. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. 
Mm, all the time is good. Okay. Uh, middle school in New York is uh, serve, is under fire for serving fried chicken, watermelon, and waffles to students on the first day of Black History Month. The school's principal released the following statement. We are extremely disappointed by this regrettable situation and apologize to the entire NIA community for cultural insensitivity displaced by our food service provider. The statement continued. I am disappointed that Amarok would serve the items that differed from the published monthly menu, especially items that reinforce negative stereotypes concerning the African-American community. All right, y'all, these stories are difficult because while they are stereotypical, some of the stuff we do like, but it, I wanna know who put this out there. We're gonna get into that. What are your thoughts on the situation? And would you have gladly taken the school lunch with chicken and waffles, Q? You're shaking your head. I see a reaction from you. No, listen, you listen, in 2023, we're not doing this. I don't accept your apology. Screw you, F off. There is not a single white person within earshot of my voice in 2023 that does not know black people and chicken and watermelon don't go together. There's not a single white person in 2023 that doesn't know saying the N word is inappropriate. These are just things that at this point they know. If we were in the 70s, if we were in the 80s, I want to show a little grace and even say the 90s, I would say they did not know. At this point, we hear these stories every black History Month. You waited until February of all the configurations of food that Aramark does for, for schools or whatever. You wait until February to pair chicken, waffles, and, and watermelon. It was done intentionally. And y'all got to be careful about when white people gaslight you because they do just enough to make you think you're crazy. And then do the, oh, oops, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yes, you did. There is not an adult white person in 2023 that doesn't know any better, especially if you are educated enough and well-vested enough in a company to be over the menu. That means you're a very intelligent person. You worked your way up the chain that far to be over the menu. You know this was intentional and I'm not buying it. Can I ask y'all a question? What if a black person did this? Did they need their ass whooped? Okay. Al, what do you think about this? Um, I agree wholeheartedly with Q on this. And what's so funny is, like Q said, if you're educated and you work in Nyack, everybody knows Nyack, New York, is a very wealthy and affluent neighborhood. The median income there is around eighty to ninety thousand dollars a year. Um, so believe me, they know what's going on, and a principal knows exactly what's going on when it comes to the menus of the kids because there's so many allergies. There's so many things that they have to be aware of when you are a uh, principal in affluent counties. There's always a complaint. You know exactly what's being served every day of the week. You know exactly what's being served every week of the day, every week of the month, and you definitely know what's being served when it comes to Black History Month. Cut it out. You playing dumb is insulting and acting unaware is not only insulting, but it's ignorant for someone of such a high class and standard in the state of New York. Hey, I want to bring up um, Taco Tuesday. What do y'all think about Taco Tuesday? Totally different or similar? Is this, could, could they say, oh, and I'm playing devil's advocate here yeah. before y'all jump down my throat. Um, and when I say that, like, you know, Something, some of these things that we do love. I, I actually am a huge fan of chicken and watermelon. I mean, chick, chicken and waffles, not damn the watermelon. Cold. The watermelon goes cold. too far. Look at this damn cool. No, 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 no. I like me some chicken and watermelon and waffles, but I don't like the watermelon. <laughs> Freudian slip. Damn cool. I really, you know what? I really make it a point to not eat watermelon around white people because of the stereotypes. And I know it's a stereotype, right? Not me. So, uh, okay. Okay. So you like it, right? We, I like, I like chicken and waffles. You like watermelon, but we get very offended when we know white people doing it. We're like, they're trying us. Right. Do you think, um, what do you think about when white folks, you know, they love taco Tuesday and single de Mayo. Are they exploiting it too? Is it, or is it totally different to y'all? What do y'all think? Is just, taco just... Tuesday Hispanic history month? Well, not, well, sometimes they do. Uh, okay. So I, I it's know. year like, round, right? It's year round. So every Tuesday we know we're celebrating his, the Hispanic culture, correct? With the Taco Tuesday. We so get one, we get, we get one month a year. And that's the only time that you're going to offer on your menu, chicken, waffles, and watermelon the first day of February. That's insulting. Yeah, okay. I, I I definitely think the two are different. I think Taco Tuesday is actually more of an homage to the Hispanic culture, the Hispanic or, culture. Or, or, or or at at best homage to our bank accounts. You know what I'm saying? I don't <laughs> think I don't think anyone is necessarily 
tying their culture to the dish in a stereotypical way. I think the, the, the type of tacos that we eat on Taco Tuesday have kind of been integrated in American culture. And it's more of just an American thing that we do when we get off of work, we go to Taco Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I think it's completely different than going out of your way to pair fried chicken with watermelon. And the argument would be valid mm -hmm. if in black hole, black households, that was actually a meal pairing that we actually ate. Like I've never gone to anybody's house and their mother served me chicken and watermelon at the same time. It's a bit much. And do you, do you all remember when Donald Trump they he got a, he took got a lot of heat when he was like I think it was thinking about he was like with the burrito and, and they thought that he was trolling and clowning. Do you all remember that? Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, listen, I am not arguing against this. I think especially if somebody white did this, like again, it goes back to the other story: sitting back, knowing what the stereotypes are, knowing what the of how offensive it could be. And, and 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 doing it anyways. Like, I wonder, they get together and say, this will be funny for us. You know, mm -hmm. I do wonder about that. Is it that sinister? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, it, it or has it? to be at this point because why, why else not? Okay. All right, great segment. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more after this. Another look at this moment in Black History sponsored by Nissan. Black Soul celebrates Black history makers who have broken barriers and created change. Megan Pythas is Sesame Street's first Black female puppeteer, giving a fresh voice to a new generation of children. In 2020, Megan became the voice of Gabrielle, a six-year-old Black girl Muppet on Sesame Street. Megan is a self-taught musician and singing ventriloquist. Seven of the Lord. The two-time Emmy Award winner gained national recognition when she appeared on the hit television shows America's Got Talent and Showtime at the Apollo. With ventriloquism, it adds in the interaction between a human and a puppet. But long before Megan took center stage in the spotlight, John W. Cooper paved the way for black ventriloquists thrilling audiences with his puppets and his famous show, Fun in a Barbershop. Megan Pyfus's amazing voice and her magical gift to bring puppets to life will inspire generations of children to dream big and to explore their imagination and creativity. Honoring Black History Month on TGIF, presented by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop NissanUSA.com. And I'd like to thank Vanderbilt University for the footage. Real quick, before we get into this last story, why is it important, is it important for Black children to learn about the fields of puppeteering, either one of you? So, our, so you know why? Because in so many Black families, we push our kids to go get Cook County and government jobs, not knowing that there's a whole range of employment that pays very well in the creative field that's underserved, and ventriloquism and puppeteering is one of them. Okay, Al? Totally agree. All right, y'all. Uh, moving on. Have, I'm sure y'all know about this whole thing about eggs being so expensive, right? Well, people are starting a new hustle by smuggling eggs into the country from Mexico. The number of smuggled eggs seized through January 17th has increased by 91%. They slang these eggs. Uh, most people who are caught with the eggs were carrying about 30 egg cartons, which are purchased at lower prices in nearby Mexican markets. Can y'all blame people for smuggling eggs across the board? Al, what you think? Uh, absolutely, I can claim I can blame them. Listen, it's illegal to bring raw eggs to the United States, and the fine is ten thousand dollars. Why are you why are you trying to pay a ten thousand dollar fine to sneak if it's seven carts at four dollars a cart, one hundred and twenty dollars worth of eggs in? Something about that's not adding up to me. I, I'm just not getting it. I, so I, I would say I wouldn't smuggle anything in that's going to cost me ten thousand dollars if I get caught when I paid one hundred and twenty dollars for them. All right, all right, Q. You, you know what, Al? You too damn smart for your own good because you're absolutely right. The math ain't damn math. <laughs> the math <laughs> I was prepared to say, I know in some places they said the eggs is high, but God damn it, y'all. The eggs ain't that damn high. I mean, listen, if, if them three or four dollar increase on them damn eggs is the difference between feast or famine in your family, y'all just need to go ahead and die. Okay, because <laughs> it's just, it's not that serious. Or eat cereal, bitch. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It's just, them little, that, them little three, four dollars, it, it's not that real. 
I, I, I didn't, I guess I'm not a huge egg eater. So this isn't affecting me like that. I'm like, is it really that like people act, they, they smuggling eggs, risking a $10,000 fine across the board. If you're going to smuggle across the Mexican border, you better get you some fentanyl or some cocaine or something, <laughs> or some ecstasy pills. At least you go make a big, uh, a you know, markup. the margin's bigger. I don't know. Okay. Now this is in no way of me advocating for y'all to do this. And Fox Souls not asking me to do that. I'm just saying, make it make sense. All right. Um, I want to thank my co-host for a fantastic show. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. And you got to stay tuned for the Sharpton Sisters that is coming up. And before we go, uh, once again, okay, do I have something else to add? No? Okay. Thank you again to Vanderbilt University for that footage of Megan Pipus. Uh, once again, we will see y'all back on Friday, y'all. We'll see y'all then. And uh, I don't know, don't smuggle eggs. Bye, yeah. soulmates. Have a good night, soulmates.